Hello there. Welcome to this course on financial accounting. This course is split into 12 parts or sessions. The objective of this course is to provide you with something that is highly structured and easy to follow without the need to memorize anything. Before we get started, let's look at why one should learn financial accounting other than for obvious career opportunities, right? First, for financial literacy. If you want to be able to read financial statements and interpret the financial information provided in those statements, you might want to learn financial accounting. Next, for investment analysis. If you want to read financial statements and look at how to assess the profitability or future growth opportunities or the financial position of a company, you might want to learn financial accounting. Next, for decision making. If you are a manager, you might want to learn and understand financial accounting so that you can assess the financial impact of your strategic initiatives. Next, for your own personal financial planning, it's essential that you understand financial accounting so that you can learn about budgeting or saving, investing and also for retirement planning. Finally, if you are an aspiring entrepreneur, some knowledge of financial accounting can help you manage your business finances can help you in the process of securing funding from investors, can also help you create financial statements that comply with certain regulations. A course on financial accounting can serve as a prerequisite for some other courses you might want to learn, right? In managerial accounting, you learn topics like budgeting and cost analysis, and you will end up relying on some of the topics you learned during the course of financial accounting, right? Next, if you are interested in doing a course on financial statement analysis, again, you will rely on some of the concepts you learned during a course on financial accounting. Or let's say you want to do a course on corporate finance where you will learn about financing decisions or you will learn about valuation. Again, you will build on some of the concepts you learned during financial accounting, right? Or if you want to study auditing, okay, where you want to evaluate internal controls of a company to understand compliance with regulations for example or if you want to do a course on financial planning and analysis better known as FPNA again you will be building on some of the fundamentals from financial accounting or if you want to do a course on taxation where you might want to calculate taxable income and also work on your tax reporting again some knowledge of financial accounting can really help to keep things simple before we get started, let's check out the outline for the whole course and look at what's, what has been planned for the 12 parts or the 12 sessions. Okay? The first part covers an introduction to financial accounting, where we'll look at what financial accounting is and we'll lay the fundamentals for the four financial statements. Okay? In part two, we'll cover the accounting cycle, how to do journal, journal entries and the process leading up to creating the financial statements. Right. Part three will cover adjusting entries, okay? The various adjustments that have to be performed before the end of each time period, right? Okay. From part four until let's say part 10, we'll be focusing on different parts of these financial statements and look at in detail how to account for these sections, right? So for example, in part four, we are looking at how to account for revenues and receivables. In part five, we learn how to account for cost of goods sold and we look at the different inventory management techniques, right? And in part six, we look at how to account for fixed assets or plant property and equipment and also how to account for intangible assets. In part seven, we look at how to account for current liabilities and long-term liabilities. Then in part eight, we focus on bonds. And in part nine, we learn how to account for equity and in part 10, we look at how to account when you have debt or equity investments in other corporations, right? Finally, we get to part 11, where we look at exclusively on the statement of cash flows. And in part 12, using ratio analysis, we look at how to analyze different financial statements, how to compare different statements of different firms, and so on. Okay, let's get started with the first session, which is an introduction to financial accounting. In this session, we'll start with understanding what exactly is financial accounting, and then we'll focus on the two largest financial accounting standards, namely GAAP and IFRS, okay? And then we'll focus on who are the players, who are the most important players in financial accounting, okay? 
Then we'll move on to the differences between this course, which is financial accounting versus what we learn in managerial accounting, for example. Okay. Finally, we will conclude with an introduction to the four basic financial statements, the balance sheet, the income statement, the statement of retained earnings, and the statement of cash flows. Okay. We'll conclude with that because we have the next few sessions from session two until session 11, where we'll just be looking at these financial statements in a lot more detail. So what exactly is financial accounting? It's the process where you record, summarize, and present financial information, okay? You provide relevant and reliable financial information to the various stakeholders using accounting standards such as GAAP or IFRS so that you can maintain some kind of consistency and comparability, right? Okay, financial accounting, as we've seen, is much more than just bookkeeping. We've seen that it provides basic building blocks for understanding several other courses such as managerial accounting, corporate finance, financial statement analysis, taxation, and so on. Okay. Next, let's look at the differences between the two main sets of accounting standards that are used around the world, okay? namely GAAP and IFRS. GAAP stands for Generally Accepted Accounting Principles, and IFRS stands for International Financial Reporting Standards. Okay. GAAP is rules-based. Okay, You have a set of rules and regulations that you have to follow, whereas IFRS is principles-based. Okay, So you, you are provided with a set of principles, but then you can choose how to apply them. Okay. GAAP applies to all US companies, whereas IFRS has been adopted worldwide. It's not mandatory, but more and more firms around the world have been using IFRS. GAAP rules are more detailed and prescriptive, which means it makes it easier for comparability, right? When you want to compare two or more firms, okay, you can see that when they use the same rules, it's easier to compare them, okay? But IFRS, because it's less detailed and more flexible, it's a little bit harder in comparison, right? Okay, when you compare two or more firms, they might have used the same principles, but the way they adapted it might be slightly different, right? So a direct comparison may not be feasible then. Moving on, let's look at who are the main players in financial accounting. First, we'll focus on the management. When I say management, I mean the CEO, the CFO, the various accounting staff, the board of directors. All these entities play a role in preparing financial statements and in certifying them. Okay? Then these financial statements are passed on to the external auditors. right? These external auditors can be any of the big four CPA firms or several other small independent firms. Okay, These auditors are responsible for checking the financial statements which they received from the management and to provide their opinion that everything is accurate and reliable. Right? Okay. Once the auditors have checked the financial statements, the financial statements are then published and presented to the public. Right? Okay. Then comes the role of the various information intermediaries, right? The information intermediaries consist of financial analysts, investment bankers, the various credit rating agencies, and information services such as Bloomberg or Yahoo Finance, okay? Information passes on through these intermediaries to the final users, right? The final users are institutional investors, private investors, lenders, suppliers, customers, government regulators, for example, right? These users sometimes may not look at the financial statements directly, but get their information from these intermediaries, right? If you want to look up some kind of financial information trend over the past few months or few years, you're more likely to go to a service such as Bloomberg or Yahoo Finance rather than access these financial statements yourself, right? And by accessing this information, you can decide if you want to invest in any of these firms or if you want to do business with any of these firms, right? Before we look at the different financial statements, let's have a look at the differences between financial accounting and managerial accounting, right? In this course on financial accounting, we study about the different financial statements that are being created with a focus on external decision makers, right? These external decision makers might be potential creditors, lenders, government regulators, or any private investors, right? Okay. On the other hand, managerial accounting is used to prepare information for internal decision makers or managers within a firm, right? Okay. In financial accounting, we learn how to provide periodic aggregated information, right? Like a summary view 
of all the information being aggregated over a certain period of time, let's say for a fiscal year, right? Okay. But under managerial accounting, okay, the goal is to provide continuous detailed information to the managers, okay, with very specific information that is tailor-made for the purpose of planning, budgeting, and any kind of analysis that is necessary, right? The statements that are prepared using financial accounting are regulated for uniformity, right? We learned the two main accounting standards that are used globally, GAAP and IFRS, okay? Using them, we have to create the statements that are consistent and can be used to compare among the different firms, right? Under managerial accounting, you don't have any regulatory requirements per se, but you have flexibility among choosing the methods that work for you, right? In a typical course on managerial accounting, let's say you would encounter different methods in handling a certain process and you can pick or choose whatever works for you, right? Okay, you have flexibility in that aspect. Okay, it's time to get introduced to the basic financial statements, right? Throughout the rest of the course, we'll be looking at these statements in detail. But in this first part, we're just going to have an introduction of these financial statements, okay? The four basic financial statements are the balance sheet, the income statement or the profit and loss statement, the statement of retained earnings, and the statement of cash flows. These four statements work together to provide a comprehensive view of a financial position and profitability of a firm, right? And to state the obvious again, these financial statements should be prepared in accordance with the accounting standards we've seen early, namely the GAAP or the IFRS, right? Okay, the first statement we'll look at is the balance sheet. It's a statement that shows the financial position of a firm at a particular point in time. What do I mean by that? Let's say, consider your own bank account as an example, right? What's the balance in your account as of today? What's the balance in your account at the end of the year? This might change, right? The balance sheet literally shows the balances of all the accounts in the company at the end of a particular time period, okay? It reports an organization's assets, liabilities, and shareholders' equity at a specific point of time. For example, at the end of the year, you can see the balance of all the assets, the liabilities, and equity at that particular point in time. The balance sheet is governed by the accounting equation where the assets of a firm should be equal to the sum of their liabilities and stockholders' equity. To put it briefly, assets is everything a firm owns. Okay, what you see on the right is the sum of everything the firm owes to its lenders and investors, right? This accounting equation has to always stay in balance. We'll dive deeper into the different types of assets and liabilities and equity from session two onwards, right? Okay, for now, let's move on to the next statement, which is the income statement. It's also known as the profit and loss statement, okay? Because it reports the revenues, expenses, and the net income or loss of a firm over a specific period, right? let's say for a particular fiscal year, right? And hence, the income statement can provide a snapshot of the profitability and performance of a firm, right? This information is very useful to the various stakeholders such as creditors and lenders, right? Next, let's move on to the statement of retained earnings. This statement is also known as the statement of owner's equity or the statement of accumulated earnings. Okay. Earnings, it's just a fancier word to denote profit, right? So when I say retained earnings, it refers to profits that have been retained by the firm, okay? So this statement shows how the company's retained earnings balance has changed from the beginning to the end of the period, okay? If you retained more profits, then your retained earnings is obviously going to increase, right? So the statement shows how much profit has been made during a particular period and how much of that has been paid out as dividends whatever profits that have not been distributed as dividends are retained by the firm. Finally, we look at the statement of cash flows, okay? This statement provides information about cash inflows and cash outflows, right? During a specific period, okay? These cash flows are categorized conveniently into operating, investing, and financing activities. So we can get a clearer picture of how cash is generated and it's being utilized by the firm. This statement complements the income statement and the balance sheet because this gives a clearer picture about the firm's liquidity and solvency, for example. Okay, let's look at just a very simple example to see how these statements could be linked, right? Okay. 
Let's say at the beginning of a year, the balance in your account is $10,000, right? Okay, let's assume that you make a salary of $5,000 during the month of January and a summary of all your expenses accounts to $3,000 during that particular month, okay? Which means now at the end of the month, you have 10,000 plus 5,000, 15,000 minus 3,000, you're left with 12,000 at the end of January. Now let's try to draw a comparison to see what is reflected in which financial statement, right? The bank balance at the end of December the previous year or the bank balance at the end of January, okay? It's similar to what a balance sheet represents, right? Okay, it shows the balance of all the different accounts, okay? What you see in between during the month of January where you earned a salary of $5,000 and you had expenses of $3,000, okay? This is reflected in the profit and loss statement and also in the cash flow statement. But you can ask me, hey Joe, but what's the difference between an income statement and a cash flow statement if all it captures is what's happening during the month of January, right? No. The income statement captures everything from a business perspective, whereas the cash flow statement captures it from a cash perspective. I will introduce a new phrase in the next session known as accrual accounting, okay, where we will see the differences between what accrual accounting represents and what cash-based accounting represents, okay. This becomes the fundamentals to the difference between an income statement and a cash flow statement. Now let's look at how information flows among the different statements, right. Now, in the income statement, revenue minus expenses gives you your net income. Net income is used in the statement of retained earnings to calculate your ending retained earnings, right? And this retained earnings becomes a part of stockholders' equity in the balance sheet, okay? Also, if you look at the statement of cash flows, for example, by putting together all the cash inflows and cash outflows, you can calculate how much cash is left at the end of each time period, right? And this cash balance is also shown under assets in the balance sheet. Right? This is just to give you a simple example of how information can flow among the different financial statements. Finally, let's look at notes to financial statements. Okay? These notes are simply just known as footnotes. They are used to provide any kind of additional information or disclosures. Right? For example, they might provide a description of the various accounting rules applied. Okay? Or they might also provide additional details about certain lines in the financial statements. Right? They can provide some kind of explanation or breakdown for certain line items, right? Okay. They can also provide additional financial disclosures about items not listed. Maybe a firm is facing lawsuits or have some other arrangements with other stakeholders. Okay. These can be discussed in the notes to financial statements. So this concludes the first session, the session on introduction to financial statements. In session two, we'll discuss the whole accounting cycle where we learn about making journal entries and the whole process that is undertaken in preparing financial statements. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.